Not all Ozempic and Monjaro are created equal. There is the name brand version, the compounded version, and the gray market knockoffs that you might find online. But which one's the best? And most importantly, which one is safest? Stay tuned because in this video, I'm gonna be breaking down the key differences between name brand, compounded, and gray market GLP ones. So let's get started. So before we get started, let's break down some key vocabulary that I will be using frequently in this video. The first is API, or active pharmaceutical ingredient. This is the primary chemical substance that is in a drug that produces its intended therapeutic effect. So most of these peptides and compounds start as raw peptides that must undergo purification, sterile processing, and formulation before they can be safely injected. The API in uh, Ozempic is semaglutide. The API in Manjaro is terzepatide. The next is CGMP, or Current Good Manufacturing Practices. These are FDA-enforced regulations that set the minimum standards for manufacturing, testing, and quality control of pharmacies and pharmaceutical products. So what are the requirements under CGMP guidelines? One is sterility. Drugs must be produced in a validated and sterile environment. Second is purity and potency standards. Every batch is tested to ensure the right dose and that there are no contaminants. Third is traceability. Every step in the supply chain is documented. And fourth is inspections. There are regular and routine audits by the FDA annually. All right, now that we've gone over the key terms, let's go over the three different sources. I'm gonna use Ozempic as an example, but this applies to all peptides, all GLP ones that are, you know, that have these three different sources as an option, whether it's FDA approved, compounded, or gray market. All right, brand name Ozempic. So this is manufactured by Novo Nordisk. The API source where they get their active ingredient semaglutide is produced under Novo Nordisk strict control, primarily in Denmark, and US-based facilities. Raw peptides are manufactured under CGMP guidelines and are tightly regulated. Supply chain. It's centralized and traceable. Novo Nordisk distributes only through FDA approved wholesalers and licensed pharmacies, no third party intermediaries, so you know what you are getting. Sterility. Injection pens are pre-filled in sterile pharmaceutical grade facilities validated with clean room standards. And this is important because since they are pre-filled, it significantly reduces the risk of contamination throughout the supply chain. Testing. Every batch undergoes full analytical testing regarding potency, purity, sterility, stability, particulate matter, and endotoxin testing. It's a lot and comprehensive, but it's important. Shelf life is validated by years of data. And why is all of this testing important? You'll see as we talk about different sources that other sources don't test every batch or any batch. And it's important because this tells you that every pen that you inject has the same standard dosing and is free of contaminants no matter what. So let's quickly talk about the pros and cons. Pros, they're FDA approved gold standard for safety and efficacy because they manufacture under CGMP guidelines in highly regulated facilities. They also rigorously test every single batch for sterility, potency, stability, and purity. So you know exactly what you're getting. And this leads to my last point, which is reliable dosing because they use pre-filled syringes, which lead to lower risk of contamination and you know the exact dose that you are injecting. Cons, it's expensive without insurance coverage. Also, sometimes it can be difficult to access during shortages. The production, sterilization, and testing of each batch prior to distribution takes so much time that when the demand is so high, it can cause a backlog of medication. Third, you know, the medication is limited to brand formulations only, so there's no customization involved. And what do I mean by that? So I do have a lot of patients who actually have allergies to the solution that's used in Eli Lilly's pen. So as I mentioned previously, the peptide or the active ingredient is a small little molecule and it's dissolved in a solution as a transporting agent to be able to be injected. That solution varies from supplier to supplier. With Eli Lilly, it's a standard solution and some of my patients have allergies to it so they have to go down the compounded route to avoid any sort of uh, negative interaction. Now let's talk compounding pharmacies. So the API source or where they get their active ingredient semaglutide is typically purchased from chemical suppliers overseas, most often in China or India, and then imported into the US by compounding pharmacies. Some pharmacies may use semaglutide base, which is chemically identical to Novo Nordisk's, while others use semaglutide salts. The acetate sodium, it's a little bit of a change in the chemical structure, still ends up with the same result, 
but the base structure is a little bit different. And this is not actually an FDA approved active ingredient supply chain. It's significantly less centralized when compared to Novo Nordisk's. Pharmacies rely on third party chemical wholesalers. And this leads to some discrepancy when it comes to transparency and traceability, because it really depends on the supplier. The FDA is trying to make sure that there is some sort of supply chain and documentation kept. So compounding pharmacies have to report their supplier to the FDA. So I'm gonna put a screenshot here, but if you look on the FDA website, they tell you where these compounding pharmacies are purchasing bulk peptides from. Sterility and testing. So that actually depends on whether the pharmacy is a 503A pharmacy or a 503B pharmacy. And we'll talk about the differences right now. So let's talk about 503A pharmacies first. These are more your traditional compounding pharmacies. Think more mom and pop. Um, they make a vial specifically for a single patient. Um, they serve individual patients only, and there isn't much oversight. The oversight is actually from the state pharmaceutical board, not the FDA. So there isn't any oversight at a federal level. Uh, when it comes to quality and sterility, they can make sterile injectables, but under less rigorous standards because of that decreased federal oversight. The sterility testing is often performed on some batches, not all. They're not required to test every single batch, like I mentioned with Novo Nordisk. And there's no requirement to follow large scale FDA, the GMP, good manufacturing practice guidelines. Scale wise, they tend to be a smaller operation intended for local one off compounding, such as, you know, my patients specifically who have allergies to the solution that Novo Nordisk uses for their injectables. I may send them to a 503A pharmacy if that's local to them and they can get the medication tweaked to their specific standards and can get have access to it readily. Risk. Because of this decreased oversight from the FDA and from a federal standard, there's much more variability in quality. Um, there's a higher risk of contamination or dosing consistently if practices aren't meticulous. 503A pharmacies may only do sterility checks on random samples and not every single batch. Now let's talk about 503B outsourcing facilities. These are much more of a large scale compounding operation. Think, you know, mini pharmaceutical manufacturer supplying hundreds of thousands of vials. They can compound bulk for hospitals, clinics, and physician offices. No patient-specific uh, prescription is required. So think about the, uh, you know, the online GLP-1 services that are provided by like Noom, Hims. there's tons out there. These usually go through a 503B facility. Quality and sterility, they must follow the GMP or good manufacturing practices. The same manufacturing standards that our pharmaceutical companies like Novo Nordisk must also follow. Every batch is required to undergo sterility, endotoxin, and potency testing. Facilities are subject to FDA inspections. So, you know, the risk is significantly lower than with a 503A pharmacy, but, you know, there still isn't as much oversight from the FDA compared to the pharmaceutical companies like Novo Nordisk facilities. However, if I was going to get a compound from a 503B facility or a 503A facility, I definitely think these standards are much higher for a 503B compounding pharmacy. So let's talk about the pros and cons of compounding GLP-1s. The pros is that often it's cheaper than brand name Ozempic. Um, also, you can offer different formats, right? So you have multi-use vials, whereas the injectable pens that come from Novo Nordisk are single use only. The compounding pharmacies allow for multi-use vials, which is great if you need to travel and you don't want to take multiple pens with you. If you want to customize your dose, I speak highly and a lot about microdosing, so check out my other videos, but I do think microdosing is the best way to take this medication. And when you're using the Novo Nordisk pre-filled pen, you can't really customize your dose. Whereas if you're using a vial that you can draw from, you can customize the dose to your needs and adjust your medication as allowed by your medical provider. So now let's talk about the cons of a compounding pharmacy. The API is often sourced from overseas, such as China or India. So there's a huge variability in quality when it comes to suppliers. And that's important because when you hear quality, I want you to think about stability. If a poor quality peptide is not stable, and why is that important? It's important because when you mix the peptide with the solution so that it can be injected, the poor quality peptide will break down very quickly and rapidly degrade to the point that it's basically ineffective in that solution and you're getting no effect. So you're basically injecting just plain old solution with no active ingredient in it. Also, some compounds use uh, semaglutide salt, which is not an FDA approved API. And the quality varies by pharmacy. Like I mentioned earlier, between a 503A and 503B pharmacy, you know, the standards and regulations are different and the batch testing is also different. So the quality between batches may vary. 
Also, there's higher risk of dosing errors when drawing from vials, right? So the benefit of the pre-filled syringes that Novo Nordisk offers is that if you have difficulty calculating your dose or if you're changing your dose constantly, it offers a pre-filled syringe. You don't have to think twice about how much you're injecting into your body. When you're pulling from a vial, you have to trust that the dosage that the pharmacy says is in that vial is truly in that vial or how much you're drawing out can vary, and that leads to dosing errors with some of my patients. So it's something to watch out for. Now let's talk about gray market Ozempic. This really is the wild, wild west. If you don't do your due diligence, you won't know exactly what you're injecting, where it's from, or what it could be contaminated with. When it comes to API, it's truly unknown. Um, it's often purchased from unregulated labs in Asia and Eastern Europe, and sometimes mislabeled as semaglutide when it's a totally different peptide entirely. There's no guarantee the chemical structure is correct and this is why when you decide to purchase from the gray market it's important to do your own due diligence and have an up-to-date and accurate certificate of analysis and this is basically a mass spectrum analysis that identifies what type of peptide is in each vial independent labs can provide this and do this service for you however most suppliers should actually produce and give you their own certificate of analysis beforehand so that you can look at it the cost should not be on you when it comes to supply chain it's almost untraceable they are shipped through middlemen online wellness websites or black market resellers no fda or dea oversight and counterfeit packaging is pretty common i can almost guarantee you that if you are getting your peptide from an online website or a wellness or med spa that you are most likely getting a gray market product that they are buying for 10 to 20 dollars per vial and reselling for 10 to 20 x what they purchased it for and most of the times they don't even do their own um, certificate of analysis or verify what's in those vials they just take the supplier's word for it so just make sure you know what you are injecting and that you are not getting screwed over sterility there's no clean room standards no endotoxin control no validated sterile techniques um, this doesn't mean that uh, a good quality supplier doesn't do all of this it just means that there are no regulations or oversight and no one's being held accountable when it comes to testing there is zero mandatory testing for potency purity or stability some vials have been found to contain nothing but saline while others have overdosed peptides. This is why it's so important to ask for a certificate of analysis from any supplier or website that you are purchasing from. Even if it's a medical provider from a med spa or a private practice, ask them where these peptides are coming from and you have a right to know exactly what you are putting into your body. And to be honest with you though, they probably won't tell you because like I said earlier, they are probably buying these vials for pennies on the dollar and charging you hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Now let's talk about the pros and cons of the gray market. The pros are lower upfront cost, often heavily discounted, and it's easily available online or through unauthorized sellers. No prescription or you know doctor visit needed. Cons, the API source is unknown, often from unregulated labs overseas. There's a high risk of counterfeit or mislabeled product. There's no sterility standards, so contamination with bacteria or fungus is possible. And there's no potency or purity testing, so you don't know what exact dose is in each vial, so there's a high risk of overdosing or even underdosing. So here's how I see it. Name brand GLP-1s are always the best option. They are the most reliable, the most studied, and the safest. And if you have access to it through your insurance or affordability, that's where I recommend starting. But I also recognize that for many people, that's not always realistic. Between the high price point and the strict insurance criteria, a lot of my patients have difficulty even just getting access to the medication. And that's where compounding pharmacies come in. They can be a reasonable alternative as long as it's coming from a reputable 503B pharmacy with appropriate sterility and potency standards. Now, when it comes to the gray market, Listen, I want to be transparent. I'm not here to judge. A lot of my patients were actually initially afraid to tell me where they were sourcing their peptides from because they were worried I dismissed them or shamed them. But that's not my job. My job is to make sure that my patients are at the peak of their health in the safest way possible. Even if I tell someone I don't recommend gray market peptides, they the reality is that it doesn't stop them from still using it. So instead, I work with them to reduce risk. I'll insist that they request a certificate of analysis from their supplier before making any sort of purchase. And I carefully monitor their labs to make sure nothing concerning is happening. At the end of the day, my goal is harm reduction and patient safety. While I'll always advocate for the safest and most reliable options like name brand GLP-1s or high quality compounded GLP-1s, I also know that my responsibility as a physician is to meet the patients where they are and help them safely on their journey.
my obligation is to my patients, not pharmaceutical companies or anybody else. And that's all I have for this video. I'll see you next time.